Monday, January 6, DHS warned U.S. organizations about a potential cyber attack from Iran and Iran-backed ABT groups. The CISA alert was the first public acknowledgement from the U.S. government about potential cyber attacks as a retaliation for the drone strikes that killed Iran's top general. According to CISA, these attacks are likely to come from either Iranian intelligence, contractors, or pro-Iran hacktivist groups. Within 48 hours of the drone strike, a DHS website was already defaced with an anti-American message vowing revenge. While news of a potential ceasefire between the two countries has been circulating in the news, experts warn not to put our guard down, citing previous examples of Iran attacking after talks of ceasefire. The cease alert mentions 10 attack techniques based off of known intel from previous attacks. These include credential dumping, file obfuscation, data compression, PowerShell, user execution, scripting, registry modifications, remote file copying, and spear phishing. According to Recorded Future, APT groups 33, 34, and 39 have suspected government ties to the Islamic Revolution Guard Corps and are believed to be more than capable of disrupting and damaging U.S. systems. APT 34, aka Oil Rig, made news recently when their zero clear wiper malware wiped at least 1,400 systems and caused massive damage to oil companies in the Middle East. By targeting an infected driver on a Windows machine, it quickly spread to other machines via their custom wiper malware. Wiper attacks focus on destroying infrastructure and disrupting operations rather than data exfiltration. According to their sources, these groups are likely to target what they refer to as softer targets, meaning systems and services that are loosely protected and easy to pick off. These APT groups have a history of working on behalf of the Iranian government to carry out cyber attacks across many industries and services. Some included are the financial, energy, government, chemical, healthcare, critical manufacturing, and communication verticals. For all of us, these warnings mean that IT organizations should be on high alert, and that means paying close attention to our indicators of compromise during this sensitive time. CISA recommends applying these five actions for the highest return on investment. Disable unused ports and protocols, enhance monitoring of network and email traffic, patch external facing equipment, log and limit the use of PowerShell, and ensure backups are up to date. While these recommendations from CISA are a good starting point to any cybersecurity plan, they are not all-encompassing. In a previous video, I covered how we can use MITRE's Attack Navigator to view the tactic, techniques, and procedures, otherwise known as TTP, of our adversary groups. Since we know the APT groups that are likely to attack, we can use the Navigator to build out our defenses based off of their previous behavior. I've used the Attack Navigator from MITRE to pull up the APT 33 and 39 on the spreadsheet. I'll also be posting a link below to the Navigator and to this specific spreadsheet. By using the Navigator scoring system, we can apply color indicators to see commonalities between the two groups. APT33 is in red, while group 39 is in yellow, and techniques that both groups use are in green. In total, over 40 techniques that these groups are known for based off of intel from previous attacks. Our defenses should be crafted around specific attacks or TDPs that we know APT 33 and 39 have utilized. At its most basic level, you can begin by looking up the techniques on MITRE's website and making sure you apply proper mitigations against each of them. Let's take the initial access category as an example. As indicated by Green, we know that both of these groups use spear phishing and valid accounts to gain access into our networks. Spear phishing, in any form, is an email that is targeted at a specific individual, usually via social media. The goal here is to trick the individual into clicking on a link or downloading a malicious file. Unlike a phishing email, spear phishing is specifically crafted to an individual, making it much more likely that they would download a malicious file or click on a link. If I'm an attacker targeting your organization, I'd start by finding individuals that work there. A quick LinkedIn or Facebook search should give me a long list of names that I can query from various social media platforms to find more private information. From there, I'd be looking at information on their profiles that I can use to exploit a particular weakness. By visiting Monica's Facebook page, I can see her likes and in some cases even locations and what activity she's a part of outside of work. Based off of her likes and posts, I can see that she's an active member of her local church. Spear phishing means that I have done research on Monica, which led me to know what church she goes to. Now I can craft an email that uses her church logo to send an email that makes it look like it's coming from a member of her church. The likelihood that Monica will click on a link that she perceives is from a member of her church is much more likely. And this is what makes spear phishing so effective. An effective spear phishing campaign will not just grab personal information, but it will also use fully qualified domains that look similar and even create fake email addresses from members of the church, all raising the likelihood that Monica actually opens the link. 
Once Monica has clicked on the link, the damage is done and the possibilities are endless. From here, it wouldn't be hard to grab credentials I can use for her work email. Chances are she uses the same or a variation of the same password for her company email. Or worse, she uses her work laptop for visiting the fake church link, or she uses her personal laptop to sign on to work resources. This is all a common example of the three techniques used by APT 33 and 39 to gain that initial access into your network. And since we know we're being targeted by groups that specialize in this particular category, we should put extra emphasis on protecting against spear phishing campaigns. This would include things like user awareness training, blocking social media sites from corporate systems, restricting user account logins to reputable known geo IP locations, strong password policy implementations that require a password manager, and multi-factor authentication for all user accounts. If you're really serious about proactive protection from hacktivist groups like these, there's known services available to monitor criminal underground communities for vulnerabilities that are specifically targeting your organization. If you have a SIM, you can also take the attack framework to the next level by setting up alerts for these specific TTPs. As usual, you should always have a plan in place for the various portions of the attack so your organization knows what to do if something is detected. If you want to take it a step further, you can also test yourself against these attacks by using tools such as Caldera. Caldera is a tool developed by Miner to automate the TTP attacks against your network. I covered this in a previous video, but there's many tools you can use to test your security posture against these specific attack techniques. And that does it for this edition of the CISO Perspective. Hope you found it informative. As always, please comment, hit like, subscribe to stay on top of our latest releases here at the CISO Perspective.